Do you constantly feel that you're not good enough, not qualified enough, not smart enough, you don't have enough experience, or you just don't belong, and that you simply got lucky to be where you are today? If this is you, then you have a classic case of imposter syndrome. And you're not alone. A lot of software engineers suffer from some form of imposter syndrome. And if you don't take care of it early on, it can lead to anxiety and depression, becoming a huge resistance to your career progression. In this video, I'm gonna give you some tips on identifying the root causes of imposter syndrome and how you can go about fixing them. Hi guys, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington. And this channel is all about helping you excel in your software engineering careers. And if you're into that, please consider subscribing. As usual, the reference materials from this video will be in the description below and I have timestamps, so feel free to jump to sections that interest you more. So there can be many reasons for imposter syndrome, but at least in the software engineering world, I see three main reasons surfacing over and over again. First, you think everyone around you is smarter than you and therefore you question everything you do. So this happens frequently to people who have not gone through life according to society's textbook definition of success. If you ask people who feel this way what a successful career means to them, they will probably answer something like being a straight A student in school, acing all your advanced placement classes in high school, attending a top school, possibly Ivy League, applying to a handful of coveted jobs after graduation and getting offers from most of them and likely working at a FANG company. But the problem with setting this as a standard of success is not that you gauge other people around you by this standard, but you always remind yourself that you failed with that standard. Have you ever wondered how many people around you have gone through this textbook path to where they are today? Probably none. Well, at least I didn't. I was a pretty average student in school. I failed high school twice, believe it or not. Right after graduating college, I applied to 53 jobs and got rejected by all of them. So there's that. But even today, the most common DMs I get ask for things like whether they are doomed because they didn't do the textbook degree or whether they should do competitive programming even though they dislike it a lot or should they follow software engineering because the salary is good or their parents would like them to do so. All these things will set you on a long road where you feel that you aren't good enough or you just don't belong. And the best way to fix it is to let go of the notion of one golden path to success. There isn't one, trust me. Instead, follow your passion and do what you love. All right, second, you lack the skills expected of you. For whatever reasons you have lagged behind in keeping up with the skill set that is expected of you, whether due to family or medical reasons or just by being lazy or something else, you know? And now you feel that you're not qualified enough, which takes away from your confidence, and as a result, you feel like you don't belong. Look, software engineering is a very rapidly changing landscape. Within just the span of past 15 years, just around web technologies, we have gone through so many changes that if you've had a 15-year career and kept up with everything, you probably know Java, C++, PHP, CGI, HTML, CSS, Ruby, Visual Basic, .NET, C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, SAS, LESS, TypeScript, Knockout, Backbone, Angular, React, Vue, Go, Rust, Swift, AWS, Azure, Lambdas, Functions, SQL, NoSQL, Message Queue, Distributed Queues, IoT, AI, Supervised Learning, federated learning, I can really go on for five more minutes. There is really a lot to learn and keep up with. And if you don't want to run the risk of being obsolete, you cannot get comfortable. You have to make learning a critical part of your day-to-day -day job. You don't need to be an expert on everything, but you need to have working knowledge of most of the current tech. And you can do that by books, self-learning via free resources, or through various paid courses. But really, whatever medium you choose to learn from, make sure you keep learning because the only way to get rid of the feeling of lacking skills is to actively acquire new skills. I also have a few videos related to acquiring new engineering skills fast. So if you're interested in those, I will link them in the description below as well. All right, let's move on to the next one. So third, you think that you need to be an expert in whatever you're doing. You've probably been through multiple scenarios where you had to ask your mentor about something you're having trouble with and they give you the most elegant and precise solution. And you thought to yourself, wow, I could have never been able to come up with something like that. And that's true. You probably wouldn't because you did not have the experience, but they did. 
And that is the reason they were your mentor. The only way to become an expert is to gain experience, and that takes years and years of work. But you can be effective at doing things even when you're not an expert because there are many things that make your experiences unique. For example, when I wanted to talk about software engineering on YouTube, I have the same doubts. There are probably a gazillion people more qualified than me to talk about this topic. But if you think of it, how many of these gazillion people are good at telling stories or sharing their experiences, or good at video recording and editing, good at relating and communicating with their subscribers and fellow software engineers? That puts me on a unique spot, right? Sure, there are definitely people even more uniquely placed than me and they probably have a million subscribers, but that isn't the point. The point is that expertise is not always required to guide others. It helps, but isn't required. If you try hard, you will find that most of you are equally good at guiding others even while you're learning because of your unique ways of learning things, gathering resources, managing time, creating processes, so on and so forth. And one way to get over this feeling of having to be an expert is to start pair programming. I know pair programming can be daunting and it is daunting because of imposter syndrome. We feel like we aren't good enough, we lack the skills or we aren't experts. But power through those emotions and force yourself to pair program and you will very quickly find out that no one is perfect. Everyone has their hacky way of doing things and everyone makes mistakes. In addition to that, learn to say, I don't know. It's okay not to know. No one knows everything, but be comfortable saying that you don't know, but you trust in yourself enough to find the solution even when you don't know things. These two things, pair programming and learning to say you don't know, will liberate you from the feeling that you're not good enough at something and will give you the confidence to do great things even when you're not an expert. Try it. Well, these are the three main reasons for imposter syndrome that I wanted to talk about today, but obviously there are much more and I will briefly touch on them. So Dr. Valerie Young, a leading researcher in imposter syndrome, states that there are five kinds of imposter syndrome traits. The first one is the expert, which we just discussed, a person who feels that they have to be an expert to do anything well. The second one is the superhero who believes that they have to succeed in everything they do. Failure is just not an option. The third one is the soloist who believes that they should handle everything on their own uh, and that asking for help is like a crime. The fourth one is the average fool, which we talk about as the first reason. You think that everyone else is a genius and you're just average. Uh, this also links to the second reason I talked about, where you may feel average because you genuinely lack the skill set. And the fifth one is the perfectionist, who demands that everything is always perfect. You think that you failed if you cannot meet your own standards of perfection. Uh, and identifying with any of these traits will help you fix the root cause of your imposter syndrome. And one last thing I wanted to mention is the spotlight effect, which is more of a side effect than a reason for imposter syndrome itself. Uh, it's the feeling that everyone notices what you do. Everyone is looking at you. Everyone is concerned about you. But the truth is that everyone just wants to get by. They are concerned about their own problems. People rarely have time to focus that much on you. Whatever spotlight you're putting on yourself is a side effect of one or more reasons or character traits that I mentioned in this video. So sort those out first and then let go of the feeling that people care about what you think or do and you will find that you will gradually stop feeling like an imposter and gain your confidence back. And hopefully that will help you focus on progressing your career as your best self instead of worrying about silly things that don't really matter. And do let me know in the comments below if you have ever felt imposter syndrome and if you identify with any of the character traits uh, that I mentioned in this video. Also, please share any tips for dealing with imposter syndrome or share your own stories on how you dealt with it. And that's that for today. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, comment and share. Also consider subscribing to this channel for more software engineering content. And while you're here, please feel free to check out some of these videos that I think you'll enjoy as well. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.